instead of just putting all my video footage to music, I want to share and talk about the experience more. I wanted to shoot this yesterday while on the hike, however, I did run out of batteries. So it's Monday morning and I'm just going to get it done now while the memories are fresh in my head. So two weekends ago, Bobo and I discovered that we had this previous weekend free. So I went on the BC Parks website to see if there's any camping spots available and of course there wasn't because it's summer in BC and all that's booked up. So I started to look for alternatives. I wanted to look at private campsites. I ended up looking up Riverside Resort. I actually went there last year for a bachelorette party and stayed in a cabin. They have cabins and yurts and it's an RV park and you can camp there. Um, anyways, they had one yurt available, so I booked it. But when I took Friday off work, just because we really wanted to get a head start on the weekend and sneak in a hike and or swim on the way up to Whistler, we ended up actually going to Brom Lake. And I've always driven past here. You can always see it on the highway up to Whistler. It's on the left-hand side when you're going up. Um, and it never really appealed to me because I just thought the lake was right there on the highway but it actually goes a bunch behind the highway so it's a little more secluded once you go in which is nice. Oh yeah, my friend's partner told me about Brom Lake had trails so I started looking up the check-ins of Instagram of who checked in at Brom and to see what the trails were like and I found this beautiful viewpoint and it turns out it was a tangentless viewpoint hiking trail and yeah, so we did that and then didn't go swimming just because it was a little cool. Um, and then after that, we went up to Whistler and checked into our yurt. The Riverside Resort is right beside Skandinav Spa. So if you've been to Skandinav Spa, you've likely seen the yurts or the cabins. Saturday morning, first thing we did is we went to Brandywine Falls and we hiked to the base of it. And I've heard this is a little sketchy and a lot of reviews online, people get lost. So just, I read, the instructions thoroughly um, to make sure that we weren't one of those people getting lost. This hike was super secluded so we we did the whole thing without seeing anybody until the very end when we were hiking back up we saw four people. Kind of a little scary actually there was a bear cave um, at the bottom. Bo read online that the bear cave didn't have any bears in it as of last year but um, I don't know do bears reuse their caves? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, it was still fucking scary to walk past that. So walking to the base, it's not a very nice route to be honest. You have to hike across a bunch of boulders. I don't like it. I actually bailed once walking over a log. After we're done with our hike at Brandywine Falls, um, the parking lot was actually pretty bonkers. Uh, people were waiting to get our spot as we were leaving. So I'd recommend if you are going to do this hike, get there early. I think we got there around 9.30 and the parking lot was pretty empty. Mind you, we did stay in Whistler the night before, so that was pretty easy for us to just get there at that time. The hike, I would say, took about three hours total and that was with a huge break at the bottom to take lots of photos and just take in the nice view. Um, the drone wasn't really working at the bottom because the GPS wasn't very um, strong at the bottom, so it only had in-vision mode, which means it can't go far. Anyway, so that was kind of annoying, but I did use it at the top of Brandywine Falls, past the main trail, um, so there wasn't many people around, which was nice because I hate flying it when there's people around because it's really loud and annoying. However, with the falls, it's pretty loud, so I don't think you could hear it. After the hike, we had our barbecue in the car, so we decided to have our picnic just right in the parking lot there. They had picnic tables set up. After our picnic, we went to the Callahan Valley, which I've never been to before. Um, also discovered a new waterfall, which I've never heard of before. Uh, it's called Alexander Falls. We went to Elta Lake and Bobo jumped in a couple times. It was still pretty cool out on Saturday, so I didn't go in. Um, it was supposed to be really hot on Sunday, so I was saving my swim for then. However, on the way home, all the lakes were fucking packed so we actually didn't end up getting to go because the parking lots were just so insane. So Sunday morning we got up and we decided what the hell let's just squeeze in one more hike while we're here and we went to the green mustache and had our smoothie bowls <laughs> and then after we went and did Brandywine Meadows hike so I always assumed Brandywine Meadows was just a way to get to the base of Brandywine Falls but no these are like two separate hikes um, Brandywine Falls is on the east side of the highway. Brandywine Meadows is in the Callahan Valley. Um, you have to take a sketchy ass logging road up to the base 
of the two hiking trails. So, Brandywine Meadows parking and driving and trail. Our car, my Prius, did not even make it to the bottom parking lot. We had to park way before that because there's a steep ass hill at the car, there's lots of rocks with so the wheels are just spinning. Anyway, so we had to park with a bunch of other sedans at this one spot. And I read all the reviews online about how there's just many different routes to get up there. So we ended up taking the logging road the entire way up, um, which takes you to the upper parking lot, which is where all the trucks and the SUVs go. Basically anyone who has a high clearance four wheel drive vehicle. So all the information online says this is about a six kilometer hike at around 550 meter elevation. I don't know where this was from, if this is from the lower parking lot. Our hike was 18 kilometers and 750 meters in elevation gain. Since we did park a lot lower, I'm not surprised that we did more elevation gain. However, the 18 kilometers, it's just because you're doing switchbacks on the logging road rather than just doing one steep hike up. Um, I really didn't want to do the steep hike up. I heard it was quite mucky and you had to climb over a bunch of logs, which I wasn't into because I had bailed on the Brandywine Falls hike the day before climbing over a log and got a pretty gnarly bruise. So I was fine to just take it easy on the logging roads. Um, there's no shade and it was really fucking hot out. So um, I got a little bit of sunburn and Jack was really hot. Um, however, there's lots of streams as you get closer to the top. If you plan to stop at the top of Brandywine Meadows for even just five minutes to take in the views, um, bring bug spray. I am serious. I would not do this hike again if I didn't have bug spray. It was crazy. Um, thankfully, I had my sweater so I could just put that on to help a little bit. They still bit me all through my pants and my sweater. Bobo, poor Bobo. He didn't have any sweaters or pants. <laughs> And that is why he is dancing around like crazy, trying to fight off the mosquitoes. If you feel inspired to get out of the city and go to the yurt, or even they have cabins and campsites, book through the link down below. Um, I did notice on booking.com it was cheaper for me to reserve than the actual Riverside website. I think in total for the weekend, it was $244 for two nights for the yurt in Canadian. All right, that's my first travel vlog. I hope it was a little more informative than just throwing music and footage together. 